Hey, what's up humans? Welcome back to my channel. Hope you guys are all having a wonderful week out there. I got these stones off of Etsy a couple of years ago along with some opal spheres. I removed the more colorful stones from the batches and I used them for things like earrings and resin work. But today I have a video for you guys. I'd never smoked opal before this month. But I tried out a couple of methods of smoking them, so I'm going to show you my favorite way to smoke opals, as well as I'm going to take those smoked opals and use things that Google says will remove smoke from fireplaces. We're going to soak these opals in those solutions, and we'll see if any of them really work to Avoid the smoke from the Apple Stones. If you're interested in this content, go ahead and stay tuned and subscribe if you're not already. So I'm going to take my barbecue that I have here and then I've also got a t-ball and some wire wrapping jewelry wire and I'm going to put my opals inside this t-ball that I have here. Now I have had this t-ball for a while and it's not super functional for tea anymore. It's got some holes in it and it doesn't clasp together super well. So that's why I'm using it for this. And you can really use anything with a mesh screen. You can even take uh, like something glass, cover it in tin foil, and poke holes in it for this. But you just want your apparatus with the opals in it to hang gently from the lid. So I've got it wrapped around the holes and I let this smoke for a couple of hours. Now there are a couple of other ways that you could do this and I even tried it the way that Justin did it uh, but I do find that this barbecue method is a easier less high maintenance solution uh, in comparison. I did it this way with the t-ball and as you can see it worked wonderfully. Some of them are a little bit cracked and some smoked better than others, but that's just the way it is. No opal is created equal. So we've got a variety of smoke colors here on these stones. And this is just the best way that I have found so far to smoke opal. Now again, I had not smoked opal before this month. But as you guys can kind of see, there is some splatter from the fire on these. Some of them are really black, some of them are really light, but they all have a sort of a honey brown glaze on them. So I went on Google and I looked up all the ways or several ways that you could remove smoke from a brick fireplace or like a stone fireplace. So I'm going to take these stones that I just smoked and I'm going to sacrifice them to science and we'll see if any of these solutions totally damage the stone, make them crack, or what's going to happen if one of them might work. So the first solution that we have here is it says to use a mixture of detergent or soap, pumice, hot water, and a small amount of ammonia. So I'm going to leave the pumice out of this because I don't need the physical abrasive. I know that that'll just scratch the stone, but I'm going to put together the warm water and the ammonia and the soap. And when I looked up how to remove smoke from a stone, this was the first one that showed up. So I think it's pretty promising. I made sure to mix up every one of these with a little q-tip to make sure it's totally uh, dispersed throughout and that is our soap and ammonia solution the second one here is just something that i've used around the house that i've found really removes that grease from my grill pretty well and that's a baking soda and hydrogen peroxide 
solution. And so this is just a little bubbly solution that creates CO2 gas. And I was curious if the bubbling of this combined with the absorbing it into the stone might remove the smoke from it. So we'll see if that one works. The next one we have up is a uh, hydrogen peroxide solution with a couple drops of ammonia. And this said that it would work on things like granite and sandstone. So again, pretty promising. And I made sure to put labels on all of these so that I don't forget which is which because some of them do look a lot alike. And then the next one that we have here is just baking soda and a little bit of water. Uh, this says it will work on brick. Now, I'm not so sure about this one. Um, it's got water in it and I know how Ethiopianople absorbs water. So I don't really, I'm not 100% sure if this will work, but it said it would for brick. Then our next one here is just straight vinegar. Just straight up vinegar because Google said it removes smoke residue. So why not just slap them in some vinegar? So there's my vinegar and I've used isopropyl alcohol in the past to remove uh, that sticky, smoky gunk residue, so I thought I'd throw together one of those as well. So now that we have all of our solutions together and all of our ducks in a row, all labeled and stuff, I think it's time to pop our little smoked opals up in these. And I'm gonna leave them for 24 hours, check in on them after an hour, and we'll see what the results are. So here I am just popping in a totally random number of opals per container, but I just want you guys to kind of see what they look like before I leave them to soak overnight so we can really know for sure how much or what this does. So as you can tell, some of them did get more than others. I was kind of just holding my phone camera with one hand and then popping in the opals with the other hand. So also excuse me if the video is a little shaky. From here on out, there's a lot of me holding it with my hand. But I wanted you guys to see how dark each one is that goes in there because there is such a variety of different colors in them. So now that they all have opals in them, this is where I took the caps for these little sauce cups and I lidded them because, you know, I don't want the stuff to evaporate and I know alcohol evaporates really quick. So this is them after an hour of soaking. As you can see, the vinegar, they were starting to absorb the vinegar. There's a little clear spot on that one there where it's looking better. These guys are still working on absorbing that solution and then I accidentally skipped over that one and then these two guys have the baking soda in them so it's kind of hard to see what's going on but you can tell that they are darker. So this is my opals the very next day and as you can see some of them worked and some of them didn't. But the real test is taking them out of these uh, liquids and then I'm gonna rinse them off and let them dry off on their lids for another whole day. I've got this little feeling that's been pestering me that some of these might crack when they're left to dry because these are such drying solutions. And in fact, one of my opals that I left in the alcohol solution did end up cracking that I noticed at the one hour mark. So I took half of that cracked stone and I put it in one of the other solutions and you guys will be able to see the difference 
here in a minute, but this is me just taking out the opals from their stuffs, putting them on the lids, and then I labeled, put the labels on the lids that they're hanging out on. But yeah, really interesting results. The baking soda and hydrogen peroxide solution looks like it kind of worked a little bit. But again, we don't know if any of these are going to work until they're dried out. Because opal is so sensitive, I just you just can't know until you know. So I got rid of all these, put them on the lids, labeled, and again, I left them for another 24 hours after this just to see what would happen. Now when I came back, there was no cracks, they just evaporated, and the only cracking that really did happen with the stones happened in the solutions. So we're going to start out with the failures, rubbing alcohol. This was the one that one ended up cracking on. As you can see, the, this is the one that cracked, and none of these look any paler than when I put them in. They didn't lose any color either. This one still has a little bit of color. But yeah, that didn't do anything. All right, on to vinegar. Again, this did not do anything. It didn't remove the color, but it didn't remove the smoke either. There's no cast on them. But yeah, you could still see all the splatters and everything. But, I mean, look at the color on this one. This particular sphere smoked real nice. But, yeah, nothing happened here. Next up is the soap and ammonia. And, curiously, one of these kind of looks paler than before. Um, there's a little bit of smoke splatter on it still, but it looks paler, but I know that these were all crystal before, so it made it milky, but these two guys are dark as ever, dark as could be, super dark brown. I don't think that this really removes anything from the stones. It might have made them milkier, but didn't remove the smoke. Then we have baking soda and water. Now this one was freaky. It did something very strange. It removed the color from inside of the stone, it looks like. It made them milkier and not crystal anymore. But it didn't remove any of the, the gunky splatter scum that went on them from the fire. Which is weird. It's like, why did it make them paler on the inside and kind of remove it from the inside of the stone, but it didn't remove any of it from the outside? Very strange. It, of course, makes sense that them soaking in baking soda, they would be more opaque after that, because, you know, baking soda and water, it's probably got baking soda trapped in it now, and that's why. And then we have our baking soda and hydrogen peroxide. This one almost works, but as you could see, there's a weird cast on it, like somebody put a coat of matte nail polish top coat on top of them. They're not shiny, they're milkier than they were before, and yeah, there's no scum on them. They're definitely a lot paler than when I put them in, but no, this did not work. It I think the reason why these failed so hard is because all of the bubbles from it bubbling in there overnight caused little microabrasions on the surface of it, which is what caused this matte cast. But the hydrogen peroxide and ammonia, hey, it worked. This one worked real good, guys. These stones look just like when I before I smoked them. All the colors are there. It removed all the smoke, all the scum from them, and it really just brought them back to their original state. None of them cracked. And this was the solution that I put one of the alcohol 
the piece that broke that was in the alcohol solution, I put it in this solution and it totally crisped it up. It's totally clear and that's going to be the next piece that I pick up here. Um, so if you guys remember the darkness of the piece that was in the alcohol that cracked, this is the other half of it. Well, not this piece. This piece is the other half of it. So as you can see, it's totally clear. It's totally back to its original state. It's crystal, it's not milky, and it's not dark anymore. So hydrogen peroxide, big success. What did we learn? Out of all six of these solutions, the best solution to remove the smoke from your opal stones without damaging them is some hydrogen peroxide with a couple drops of ammonia. I hope that I helped you guys answer some questions that you had about smoking opal or removing the smoke from the opals. Uh, this is the painting that I had been working on for like ever. Uh, it's a jungle painting. I got my little lions here. Uh, this is a watercolor. I used Uli metallic and color changing watercolors as well as Daniel Smith. Uh, just normal watercolors. This one took me probably like a month and a half, maybe. Maybe a little less. Uh, and there's the little color changing action. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and feel like you learned something. Don't forget to like this video if you haven't. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Maybe share this content with the community if you have some people that care about this sort of thing. And I'll see you guys next time that I decide to make a video.